Good evening, everyone. My name is Nishan. I'm a managing director and partner with BCG. Um, and I head our practice out of uh, Bangalore. I've been working in the automotive space for the last 16 years, uh, both with uh, new age as well as you know traditional OEMs. Um, let me set the context of the session first. Um, we all know automotive industry is undergoing, I would say, four simultaneous revolutions. First is the electrification of vehicles. Second is um, the whole connectivity in vehicle, and you know the previous session was also speaking about that. Uh, third is uh, shared mobility, and the fourth being um, uh, autonomous driving, which obviously is in its uh, in, in very nascent stages. The whole scale of this uh, change is at an unprecedented level, uh, especially. Uh, if you look back at the whole uh, automotive industry since its inception, all the big changes that have ever happened, I don't think has been at this scale, right? Uh, and all of this is happening not just simultaneously, but it, uh, at a very rapid pace, uh, which has given the industry uh, an opportunity to uh, fundamentally get disrupted. Uh, and that's why we are here. Uh, you all, uh, you know, in your organizations have been leading this disruption. So thank you very much for being here. Um, let me let me start by uh, you know first uh, exploring uh, why does uh, you know the new age companies have an edge um, in this uh, in this automotive era. Um, so maybe the first question to you, Uday, and uh, you know Varun, uh, maybe starting with Uday. Um, both of you are making products for the industry and you are directly competing with many of the incumbents uh, who have developed automotive products for, I would say, decades. Um, what, according to you, is the edge uh, that you guys have as compared to them? Uh, maybe Uday, we'll start with you and then Uwar. Look, I think, uh, first of all, thank you to entrepreneurs, uh, you know, to, to hosting this event uh, in Bangalore. Um, clearly, I think, uh, you know, the market, when we go back, and I think, you know, if you look back um, six, seven years ago, and I think uh, I still remember, you know, when we first uh, connected with Magenta, right? I think we, we, what I was going to say is the companies in the new age, it's like, you know, we, we are building technology. We are building products um, faster. Um, I also think uh, in this space, uh, you know, before green energy and sustainability, a lot of the big boys and girls um, didn't really believe in it. Um, you know, uh, Bajaj is one of the biggest players. I think uh, he said something about having somebody for breakfast, I think, you know, in one of his slides. So I think there was a lack of belief in this space. And I think where a lot of startups, whether it is OEMs, whether it's logistic players, um, it goes for everybody. You know, why would any of us, you know, who are sitting here be in this game if we didn't think um, you know, we had a chance. I think one thing also changed, I was a hedge fund manager for a very long time. I think the access to capital, um, you know, um, I don't think, uh, uh, Daryl, you being in UAE that time would have thought you'd be doing this today. But it gave, I think you got access to capital. I think we, we were able to bring new technologies. Um, we were able to do it quicker, faster. Um, I think, you know, by the time the incumbents are going to do one thing, we're going to do tech. Now they have, they have huge capital, but I don't think capital is the only game because if you're able to produce, if you're able to give and assimilate and align forces, um, I think it gives us continuously, um, you know, a, 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 you know, an edge in, they, it'll take time because the structures they have, right? I mean, you're a BCG, you know, you see the structures you have versus maybe compared to, to us, right? Um, obviously, as we get bigger, we will also have that issue. But I think what I think we have is, I'll tell you two things. First, we have the hunger. Next, I think a lot of us want to make a change. And, um, you know, oh, we've got Arun. Arun, please, man, come join us, man. Please, please. Um, there's, another, there's another guy here who I think, you know, watch out. You know, you've been watching this guy for a long time. But I think, you know, Arun's come up. I'll, I'll give you a clear example. Why is Arun today, today's star? Because he came up with a technology which nobody had. And he was able to execute 
in a very short period of time, um, quicker, faster than everybody else. So I think, again, I'll just leave that with, um, I think you know, we are continuously working on building um, you know, new products faster and quicker, but also, I think having, um, you know, just being big doesn't mean only, they have a lot of money, but uh, I think a quick reactionary force can probably take out an entire, an entire fleet of, you know, um, you know, why is Russia not able to, able to get Ukraine? They have got 10 times, they, yeah, they continuously got a quick, faster, technology-oriented, drones are being fighting it today, not, not tanks. So I think in this, in this war of green energy and sustainability, I think at least, uh, for me, whether I win or lose, I don't matter. But as long as this country is clean and greener, I think I'm, go I'm good with that. And I hope all these young guys, you know, uh, especially, you know, what I see, you know, building companies, I wish all of them a lot of success. Thank you. So again, yeah, I completely agree with what I said, but one more thing that I would like to add is that the larger companies, they, they definitely disrupted the market when they came in first. But it's been a while since they've been the market leaders. And, and when you build a business that is a, that large, you're in the business of building better. Uh, you know, or maybe a Honda Civic 2020 is better than 2019, 2021 will be better than 2020, and so on and so forth. So they, they definitely are good at building better. Uh, but what, what the new challenges or you complete change of direction needs is, is building different. Uh, I think that's where uh, the DNA or, or the momentum of a large company really doesn't work in their favor. In fact, it hurts uh, you know, in, uh, their ability to do different uh, as opposed to doing better. Um, and that is something that we definitely don't come with. Like that, that, that package is something that is not inherent to startups. Uh, what we do is really look at the problem and, and analyze what, you know, what needs to be done. Um, how do you solve a problem from the grounds up with, uh, with, with completely out of the box thinking? And, and that's what really gets you different products. Uh, and problems today require different product solutions. Wonderful. Welcome, Arun. Ah, sorry. I think, I think <laughs> <we> traf <laughs> muscle traffic all the way from Hosu. We, we do need some innovation on the traffic side as well. So, you know, <laughs> something for you all to think about. But, Arun, since you're here now, uh, I want to ask both you and Daryl, um, you know, the same question, but slightly differently. Um, you're more in the service business. And of course, you know, there haven't been too many companies doing this uh, earlier. But of course, everyone, even the traditional companies are trying to get into this. Now, when you look at this, you know, uh, you know yourself as a new age company trying to work on new technologies, um, as well as some of the traditional companies trying to get into, again, what do you see your edge? Uh, in this space now? Um, I think a short introduction is important, what we do. Um, we are an integrated e-mobility logistics service provider, right? So we've been operating three wheelers and four wheelers on the cargo side, not the passenger side. Now, um, you, you did mention that there are a lot of big players who want to come into this game, right? So fair, more the merrier is what we believe. Uh, collaboration is what we believe in also. Now, but what has been stopping them from doing all this while they have the vitamin M, they have the money power, uh, they can just purchase like 5,000 vehicles and dump it in India and run the logistics. No, that does not work like that. Um, we've been working with a lot of FMCG organizations, huge humongous, the top three, top five FMCG companies. Um, the existing combustion engine service providers that they have, uh, they were the first people to in fact try electric vehicle for these companies. Unfortunately, they've not been able to service them. They tried, failed, tried, failed, tried, failed. Ultimately, the FMCGs had to reach out to startups such as Magenta. Why? Multiple reasons. A diesel or a petrol driver does not know how to drive an electric vehicle, right? Uh, they have frequent breakdowns, the range, and all of that collapses. Point number two, for such big organizations, charging infra is one of the biggest entry barrier. Right? It's not as simple as you know, just putting a CNG for 5 minutes or 120 seconds or something. Right? So this is a second point. And number three, these are very, very, very old school sort of uh, operators, uh, paper trails and you know, telephone based. This is where the edge comes. We are the tech based company. So every inch the vehicle moves, it throws in hundreds of data points. Every second the charger is on, it throws another set of hundreds of data points. 
combining all of these three things is something which a new, a new age startup has an edge. That's my. Yeah, well, experiment, we're an energy company, we're a full stack energy company. So we will batteries, charging, network, the full stack. Uh, so you get 15 minute full charge. Uh, why do we do this and why do we think this is a startup problem to solve? A uh, bunch of problems, a bunch of reasons, right? A, money doesn't solve this problem. You know, you, you can't bankroll your way into 10,000 charging stations. Well, you can, but each of them will still take a long time to charge. I mean, so fundamentally, charging is a technology problem. Uh, it's not like petroleum, where, you know, uh, where fundamentally you're dealing with commodities. So it's really about trading on commodities, distributing commodities, transacting petroleum. Well, that's easy, you know, just a simple, dumb mechanical process. All that has changed. Uh, energy has now become a two-sided problem. Half your energy problem is actually on the vehicle, which is your battery. Half your energy system is now on the ground, your charger. And no amount of money solves this problem, right? So you've got to fundamentally get down to the brass tacks, solve really hard engineering problems at a battery level, at a charging level. So that's step one. This is a hard tech problem. It's a two-sided tech problem. Uh, a lot of utility companies approach this the wrong way. Utility companies think, oh, because I, got, I generate electricity, I should be able to solve charging. It's actually fairly decoupled, right? Uh, electrons behave the same for everyone. So fundamentally, it comes down to the grid is open for everyone, right? So it really comes down to who can build the best experience on the charging side, the best technology on the battery side, who can pair both of this and really deliver that seamless experience on a daily basis. So there's a technology problem, there's an operational, and also on a daily basis, getting the right vehicle to the right charging station, uh, that's a very consumer internet-ish experience, like Swiggy, right? Like, like where you have to manage all the Indian chaos on a daily basis and deliver that experience twice a day, thrice a day for every user. So I think that fundamentally energy is changing. It's now fundamentally a tech problem. And I think that's why startups have a strong right to win. Great. Uh, Mayam, you, you have an interesting position in this, right? I mean, you um, obviously work with you know all the new age players, but also with the traditional players. So what do you see the difference? Why? Uh, you know, the new age companies have an edge based on your experience. Thank you. Um, look, first of all, uh, we have a lot to thank uh, all the new age players, uh, especially those in India, because let's face it, it's the classic problem where traditional companies have, are the incumbents and they have something to defend. And whenever you are the, you know, the incumbent, uh, it's hard to expect uh, innovation there to try and, you know, destroy your existing market where you have very high sunk costs and you have assets that are already giving you very high returns. Um, and it's because of new age companies that actually traditional companies are forced to also then innovate and also then, you know, get around to trying to solve a lot of these problems. I think that's great in India right now that you've got both traditional companies and new age companies pushing the boundaries on technology, pushing the boundaries on, on customer adoption and bringing right products to market and solving a lot of the challenges that the panelists spoke about. The way I contrast the traditional companies versus the uh, new age companies, uh, particularly on the OEM side, which is where we do a lot of work with all of them. Traditional companies, even when they look at EVs, they look at it very similar to their existing uh, markets, their existing business model, which is the ICE business model. And so they're playing off the conventional strengths that they have, which is brand equity, distribution network, um, and of course, you know, very large uh, uh, R&D setup to be able to con continuously bring new products to market. But when I see uh, startups, new age companies, uh, they have to compete differently. And they are thinking of competing differently. And I think that because Indian consumers are very digital savvy, I think therein lies an advantage actually for new age companies, which I think a lot of them are now getting. Uh, because traditional companies see their business model as a wholesale business model. Whereas, uh, if you see how Tesla today sells, uh, and which is what I think a lot of EV players in India are starting to also get, what you ideally want to do is build your customer base. You want to you want to generate your own inquiries. You want to be able to nurture and convert those inquiries, and then you want to be able to you know drive value from that customer over its like over the customer's lifetime. Now that's not how traditionally you know OEMs have ever looked at their business model, right? If you ask them, do you know? who's bought your uh, two-wheeler or four-wheeler or three-wheeler, they would have no idea. They know how much uh, sale the dealer or the distributor has picked up. And I think new age companies are starting to look at their business model differently. And, uh, and I think that's how they will end up being able to compete with the inherent strengths that I think traditional companies have. Wonderful. Let me move to 
you know, the second aspect that I wanted to explore with all of you, uh, automotive industry and, you know, the entire world is moving towards what we call sustainable transportation, right? Uh, which requires a lot of, uh, you know, technology innovation as well as investments. Uh, so maybe first to Varun and, you know, then to Daryl. Um, Varun, while you have a product, you also are kind of having a service offer. Uh, which areas do you see, uh, you know, significant innovation happen from your perspective? Uh, first Warren and maybe then Dara. Sure. Um, when, when it comes to sustainability, I think it's undebatable that we need to move away from ice. Uh, when you're thinking about carbon emission, again, we've heard a lot of uh, arguments for and against this, uh, this whole, you know, EV emits more carbon dioxide than than uh, natural, I mean, okay, ice vehicle over the lifespan. I, I, I don't think it's, it's really, uh, you, know, it, you can argue both sides with, with data just as credible as the other. Um, but in, in any case, if you are going to rely on, on, uh, on, on ice, there is just no starting point of reducing carbon emission, right? And then, which means that the, the option that we have right now is to, is to move away from ice. And right now, battery operated vehicles are the only option. We don't have the other. Uh, the hydrogen model or, or uh, the fuel cell models that, uh, that could potentially become an answer tomorrow. But when you're coming to battery operated vehicles, um, again, it, it, depending on, on the problem statement that we're trying to solve, we have found that there are solutions that can work very differently from industry to industry. Like four wheelers are, are a different problem to solve for, two wheelers are a, are a completely different problem to solve for. For example, our own technology would, would benefit very well a four-wheeler, which you cannot swap the battery out. It's, it's a fairly large one. And, and, and charging that is really only a practical option that you have. And then if you can do it faster, then and you, you take away a whole lot of problems that are associated with electric vehicles, like range anxiety, um, and, 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 you know, and even battery life, uh, right? And then that is a pro problem that you can solve for four-wheelers. And the, the problem that you can solve for two-wheelers is, is make the battery portable. Um, you, you don't have to start the Vehicle, you know, or buy the vehicle with the with, with the entire range that you need, uh, you know, to, to to cover your highest case scenario, right? Like you don't you don't need to have a battery that can do 200 kilometers a day if if that's what you do only one day in your lifetime. If if the use case is just 20 kilometers or 30 kilometers a day, then the better way of doing that would be to buy a smaller bat battery pack where you can just get your normal complete you know day to day uh, use case covered by it. And have portable or, or a swappability as an option where you can cover your worst case with the network of portable or swappable batteries. So I think there are these new things that you can come bring to a vehicle where you reduce the upfront cost of a vehicle from, from what it is right now and make it much more lucrative than even an ice bike. So with a smaller battery, you could look at a scooter for less than 60,000 rupees. There is no nothing you can buy for 6,000 rupees in the ice kind of bad yeah. So you can potentially increase the mobility access to a lot more people and make it sustainable for the environment. Okay. Uh, let me start from the top, right? So I think last calendar year we sold about 16,000 electric vehicles. Uh, sorry, six, my bad, 16 lakhs. Uh, out of which 50% 15, were two wheelers, right? Slightly higher than 50%. But the remaining 35, 40% were three wheelers. Right, and these three wheelers were passenger segment as well as the cargo segment, passenger being higher. Now, that gives you a trend who are the mass adopters? Where the, so essentially, I was reading a report where it said that 10% um, of India's carbon emissions are from road transportation. Right, trucking is one of the largest contributor to carbon emissions. This is probably one area that we need to, you know, target and tackle. Probably you solve a lot of bigger pieces uh, around it in terms of curbing the carbon emissions. Um, yeah, so so trucking and transportation is one area. Yes, is one area. Wonderful. Um, my next question is for Uday and Arun, for both of you. Um, you know, you're fundamentally developing products which inherently, you know, are technology focused. I mean, you're kind of going towards a new technology disrupting to that. Um, Hence, when you look at you know this entire automobile industry right now, and there are many technology innovations that are happening across, uh, you've seen the world. Uh, what technologies are you most most excited about? First of all, I'm excited about 
it goes down to the founders, right? Can they execute? Picture बहुत सारे लोग दिखा सकते हैं लेकिन वो एक्चुअल बना सकते हैं या नहीं वो बहुत डिफरेंस है सॉरी स्पीकिंग माई हिंदी हियर सॉरी आर नाइ पॉलोजाइज राइट आई कीप टेलिंग यू दिस बट बाय द टाइम वी वी हैव सम गुड फ्रेंडशिप आई एम गोट मेक श्योर आर उन स्पीक्स फ्लू इन हिंदी विद मी दैट्स वन ऑफ माई के पी आईज फॉर नेक्स्ट ईयर बट वट आई वॉन्ट साइज यू नो वी हैव लुक टेड मेनी टेक्नोलॉजीज बट वट आई डू वॉन्ट साइ इज कैन दे एग्जीक्यूट बिकॉज एट दी एंड दिट आई um you know our customers um you know definitely want to see something that is long lasting something that is quality something that has service so for me you know we we align with multiple forces uh you know we we look at uh, you know I'm just heading right out of here we've built something uh with CBT technology I, I was just talking to you earlier uh, this vehicle drives like honestly like I mean and, and I don't you would know you're a, you're a car buff yourself It's like an Honda, or a, you know. It's it's just the feeling of driving that vehicle will be completely different. We've been spending, we spent almost two and a half years. It's ready. I'm just going now, and you know, we just want to check over the hills, over what's going on. Can it actually carry 900 kg load? Um, so, so I look at technologies which are which which have a which people can actually execute. That is extremely important. I also believe. Um, You know that that scale it needs to be achieved because I mean you know if you're just a, a one or two year wonder I don't think you're going to be able to last the game. It's clearly showing right now. Anybody who cannot um, cannot get scale, cannot get um, long term. You know technology is good, but you've got to choose the thing. I'll be honest with you, I'm not seeing uh, the big boys and girls in this game adapt new technology. They're going. I'll give an example with battery tech. They're only going with fixed. I mean, really, if you look at it, if I look at all the top two or three or four players, they're not going with you know fast charging. Um, yeah, you know, we'd swap maybe one player, and I think I hear that also is going to reduce. So I think you know we need to be able to, you know, I want to be aligning forces with people that'll give me scale, that'll give me the technology that is continuously able to develop because what works today. I don't know. I think you can talk about it. What works today, maybe two years later, doesn't work, right? I've worked with some players that have been that had great technology, but two years later, they're still sitting there. And I think they're they're SOL, right? And I think so. I think that's an extremely important part. And I think I want technology that can really change the lives of people, um, and not just in. Uh, tier one, two, three, four city, uh, tier one cities, but two, three, and four. Only then, you know, when I see, and I know Magenta is doing this. If I see Magenta in tier three and four cities, you know, apart from you know Bangalore or Delhi or you know Chennai, for me, if myself or somebody else can give them that technology where they can execute and scale in those places, then only can we. Be really successful, and that's only at the end of the day. We actually got to make money, and if we don't, if we don't make money long term, you only do that many rounds. So I think that's where it's important. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I think look at the EV space. Um, the vehicle side drive technology has come to a place where it's fairly, it's superior. It's better in every regard. Of course, not perfect. Lot, lot more room to improve. Uh, but I think th there are two, three layers around. Energy technology, financing technology—that I think will sort of be the next set of innovations needed. So everyone has access to EVs, and it could be swap, it could be rapid charging, it could be a different layer of financing on top of it. Uh, but I think to pick on one point, I, uh, we're not in the zero to one phase anymore, right? And I, I think the the I think harder to realize is India has never built high tech products at scale ever. So we've either made satellites or soap, right? Uh, Satellites you make one a year, or defense tech you make one two a year. There's no cost constraint. There's no supply chain complexity. There's no scale up complexity. Or you make soap or ATA, right? So like, uh, EV is actually the first time. If you, even if you look at automotive, we've always been given hand handed down platforms, right? Uh, so either a Japanese or a German counterpart, we've sort of done the thousand to ten thousand journey. We've never done the one to hundred, hundred to thousand journey. So this is the first time India is actually going through this. Learning curve. So finding the right talent, finding the right systems, finding the right people, right, finding the right capital to sort of scale this up. I think that that will be the focus. I think for a lot of us uh, in, in India. 
uh, and, and India is a hard place to build EVs for. Uh, temperature conditions, road conditions, grid conditions, price points. You don't, most, most, most of us don't park at home, so how are you going to charge your vehicle, right? So there, there is so many unique constraints about India. Uh, it's a fairly old constraint problem. It's like how we create UPI, just innovate out, innovate the world of fintech. So India has really got to think out of the box uh, and not really focus on zero to one tech. Well, a lot of people can prototype, uh, right? I think how do you, prototyping is easy. It's really how do you scale things up that's hard, you know? Hello. And of course, uh, you know, the size of the market is large enough for, for people to experiment on this, right? So yeah. um, maybe moving on to bank and, you know, you know, I don't kind of, uh, spoke about this point that uh, while one from one side it's about you know creating these technologies and developing these products the other side is actually the adoption um, so you know what are you seeing in terms of the biggest hurdle from the customer side uh, in adopting some of these new age solutions so uh, we have the vantage point that we get about 60 million monthly active users across our different platforms on cars bikes trucks tires and uh, here's a statistic that I can share with you that if we all know that in the two-wheeler industry, EVs as a percentage of two-wheeler sales is roughly about 5% at the moment. And it's been that now for some time. Uh, Fame through subsidy changes have sort of dampened the growth of that. But if you actually look at the digital searches and the traffic that we generate for EV two-wheelers, visa V what we generate for ICE two-wheelers, um, EVs are actually more like 15%. And that tells you that Indian consumers are, you know, uh, th there's a lot larger market than what we are serving right now. Likewise, when we look at cars, right now, EV car sales in India are roughly about 2% of total car sales in India. But when I, when I look at the traffic and I see the searches and the, and the uh, you know, on, on EVs, that's roughly about 10% for cars. So then the natural question is, well, if why is the market not 10% in cars or 15% in bikes today? Um, and I think particularly in bikes right now, the hurdle is uh, the, the price differential between an ICE vehicle and an EV vehicle, which has not really been helped due to the failed subsidy change, uh, which suddenly took up, you know, upfront costs by about roughly 25-30%. Um, and I think that is something that, you know, a lot of OEMs will need to figure out, at least in the short term, how to address. Because in the long term, we know that as battery prices come down because of economies of scale, you know, OEMs over time will slowly start to pass on that benefit to consumers. That will help consumer adoption very soon get to that 15% and further as well. But I think in the short term as well, I think there needs to be a bridge strategy. Um, that can, and there can be various ways of addressing that. Uh, you know, it could be maybe say, uh, giving guaranteed buyback on, on, on EVs in order to be able to address that question, or perhaps, uh, you know, uh, sharing the risk across with many other stakeholders in the industry who have a stake in growing the industry. I think that's something which could work as well. Um, or for that matter, uh, maybe changing the ownership model. Uh, perhaps, uh, you know, bikes on subscription could be one way of addressing the high upfront cost as well. Um, I think on the car side, it's more a question of uh, the right offerings not getting there. So there is a very high degree of interest, but naturally right now you just have a couple of OEMs in, you know, that have a portfolio where about 40 to 50% of their portfolio is, comes with an electric drive train. Um, but I think give it another maybe 18 months. And I think as that offer, that choice goes in cars, we will start to see that adoption start to grow there. So, but I think it's interesting in the two-wheeler space. The other thing that is, uh, that I just maybe just leave my panel here, who are all brilliant on, uh, innovators, is cracking the motorcycle segment. Because motorcycles today are roughly about 70, 80% of the Indian market. And while we certainly see the scope for uh, scooter adoption to happen, how do you crack the motorcycle segment? And there are a few companies that have tried this, but I don't think people have as yet been able to solve that problem. I think once that happens, that's going to be a very exciting time. Wonderful. Thanks, Mike, for sharing that. I think we are close to the end, but let me squeeze in one more question. Um, in any industry or any market, you know, when you uh, introduce anything new, be it uh, you know, product, service offering, a new technology, you know, it takes time for customer to really accept it. Um, 
and uh, often you see you know the, the growth is very slow for a certain period of time and then there comes an inflection point beyond which um, you know it all takes off so very short answer you know given the paucity of time i'll go one by one um, you know where do you think we are in this journey right now uh, especially towards ev sustainable transformation are we there near the inflection still some time to go you know maybe a short answer from each of you so it's it's it's, it's really difficult to answer because the change happens very quickly when when it does um, you know the world went from just horses to cars very quickly 15 years before horses were just a thing of the past um i, I think that there are going to be some markers around you know how ev adoption is is really going to go in the jacob uh, where where the growth would be exponential day on day I, i think one of them would definitely be on the financial aspect of it where the financiers are, are more comfortable loaning and lending and, and, and really taking risks on ev ownership um the other one would be definitely around pre own ev sales like how how prevalent they would be how, how much value would evs continue to carry after let's say 3 years or 4 years of usage uh, those are the things are are you know something that build confidence uh, range anxiety is another thing that you know when when it addressed right could kick the ev off in, in the right you know in the right direction of jacob so these things when 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 they happen i think nothing's going to be stopping the adoption very quickly two parts to this question uh, number one i think the biggest issue at magenta is the lack of vehicles which has the right form factor right today we are limited to a sub 1 ton category um we we barely have any vehicles which services 1 and a half ton 2 and a half ton 6.5 ton 15 ton 25 ton 38 ton and 55 ton right nobody has those segment of vehicles nobody is even addressing those problem statements so today i think there is demand in the market people want to try out evs but unfortunately we do not have the right product uh point number 2 sustainability is just a buzzword in the board room right uh, when it comes to people who call the shots on the ground their top kpi is cost of logistics electric vehicles operating electric vehicles still happens because of the initial cost of investment and the tcos it is still expensive than the dcos who run tata aces and uh chota hathis and bada hathis so these are the two problem statements that uh, needs to be addressed i give you a short answer i think this is not a t20 match the ev uh, industry in india i think it's more like a test match and i think i sort of uh, echo what uh, uh, you know uh, what i was hearing earlier as well so i think uh, the players that have the stamina for the long run i think those are the ones that will do really really well and be the ones who end up dominating this industry for a very very long time um, but i think it's important that we all understand that we have to gear up for the long haul here uh technology will keep evolving um and uh, you know uh, a lot of innovation is needed not just in the technology but i think in the overall ecosystem for the industry to grow in in the right fashion so yeah let's see this as a test match probably we are in you know day 1 session 3 at this point okay, that that's a good way to put it look i think uh, i'll 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 absolutely second what uh, my son is talking about um अभी तो मैं मैं ऐसे बोलूंगा कि अभी ट्रेलर अभी ट्रेलर भी शुरू नहीं हुआ मूवी की तो बात बाद में है बट आउटिंगलीटी I think watch the space we're working on something new on load on on e trucks um I think there's something coming in passenger um uh, I talked to you about how about charso park just wait on that on the passenger side something big we're going to do um we're going to change and I'm saying it's not just to SM I want everybody everybody to be and building the ecosystem um I think if we can give this i think this range anxiety game uh now i think this young man here is going to change that i really think um i ask all of the guys all of you watch this guy put some money in with this guy he's got some good ideas and he's executing on the ground he's shown it in bangalore i think you know i hope to work with him someday uh you know in the future um he's somebody who 
is working on charging. Financing is being worked on. I see a lot of work being done there. Um, I do see, um, you know, whether it's green energy. Um, you know, I know, I know you said, well, it's a buzzword. But I do see a lot of work done. I see a lot of green plates when four years ago we didn't have. Um, I see what is, you know, it's great to see Cardeco talk about and watch the numbers. And I think, um, you know, at least for me, um, you know, I'm 55, maybe next 50 years, I'm long enough in this game that, uh, you know, we, we change this country. And I think with all the players here, with all the work that's been done, um, I think I wish everyone would be our own and new ideas, or, or Daryl, or Max, or, 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 you know, or even you, you know, you're, young, you're a young man, so I don't even want to say this, but every one of you work on this, and I think, um, hopefully, Bharat jitega, to usme hum log sab jitega. Thank you very much. I don't know some last thoughts from you. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, I think we're so far, far beyond the inflection point, I think, uh, I mean, we just look at penetration in a couple of segments, look at mind share, before this, we, you know, we started April 2013, 2014. Uh, if you told someone, oh, an EV will be faster than petrol vehicles or diesel vehicles, they would think you're on something, right? So today, today it's there are 15 percent penetration in three wheelers. If you look at Bangalore, Delhi, more than 50 percent of three wheelers sold are electric to them already. So, like, I don't think we should be discussing inflection points anymore. There are detractors: uh, cost, uh, flexibility, financing, ownership. A uh, lot of problems to be solved. It's not perfect. Uh, but that's also the opportunity for all of us to get together. That's why we're all here. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, gentlemen, we are towards the end of our session. Thank you very much for sharing your thoughts. You've been, uh, you are the change makers in this industry and wish you all the best uh, for disrupting the industry. Uh, a big round of applause, please. Thank you.